Hello, friends. Robert Bevan here, author of the Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels and short stories. With me is Sam West, and today we're going to be talking about the spell Create Bonfire. All right, this one is a cantrip, and it's called Create Bonfire. And in the beginning, I did not look anything beyond that. I thought, ah, creates a bonfire. Big deal. But it does a little bit more than that. Go ahead, Sam. What does it I do? Mean it does what you'd expect create bonfire to do, yeah. which is create a bonfire. You, for an action, you pick a spot within 60 feet, you put a bonfire there, and if something's in that area, it makes a deck saver, takes D8 damage, but then you concentrate on it for a minute, and anything that enters that space or starts its turn in the space takes a D8 fire damage, or makes the save take a D8 fire damage. Um, the reason this spell, uh, well, it also ignites flammable objects in the area that are being worn and carried. It's a bonfire. Sure. It, it does what bonfires do, but it has the thing that you can't for some real reason, everything is inflammable in D&D if it's being held by somebody. You could be holding a literal <laughs> tinderbox and it will not catch fire. I think that text probably can go away now, but it's okay. Um, basically, this is this is an admirable cantrip because this is kind of the first that took a step outside the PHB. Like, it's one instance of damage. That's all you can ever get for a cantrip. Can't do anything else. This gives you a concentration cantrip that will do persistent damage round after round in a single space which is novel because it opens up your action to do other things, especially the lowest tier. Whenever you're playing a wizard, it isn't unreasonable for you to cast this on someone's space, like a giant creature, and they're not going to move because they're like, it's a DA damage, whatever. But then you can start whacking them with your quarter staff, and you've upped your damage from a, a firebolt, and that's pretty decent. You can also cast firebolt in addition to having great bonfire out. So you get this little, you get, this is a, a very much like baby's first area of effect damaging spell this is very much like an introduction to controlling environments and using positioning and like locating spell positioning for interesting and powerful effects this is the first kind of little effect that can dip your toes into pushing creatures into spaces to do damage to them creatures getting pulled through spaces to take damage closing up corridors there's a lot of little unique things that create bonfire opens the door to and i think I would recommend if you're in the market for just a cantrip to do damage with, I would start with create bonfire because I think the spell is very useful. It's low, like the worst case scenario is you put it on someone's space, they make the save or take the damage. That's fine. It doesn't have to do anything else past that for that to be fine. And if they do stay there, if something else passes through it, if you do find a better spot to move it, it's basically free if you're not using your concentration and a bunch of other stuff, right? But it is, uh, it's exactly what I would want a cantrip to be. It is sort of like an introductory on ramp to spell casting. This is a much needed thing that's after the player's handbook. All right, you said baby's first area of effect, but it's, I mean, it's a five foot cube. I'm sorry, I misspoke. Baby's okay. first persistent damage. This ah, is a, right, right. a okay, spot okay. that will be persistently dealing damage over and over again. A five foot space will always, it'll just be that spot. That's where damage will persist round after round after round. Yeah. Um. So I'm thinking good for arson. Sure. Everything's uh, anything that has fire and it's probably yeah, good for us. Yeah. But uh, uh What what level is Firebolt? Firebolt's cantrip too. Right, so what's what's really the what are the differences between these two? Okay. Firebolt's 120 foot range, 1d10 damage. Okay. So it's right. you're gonna be able to fire from a longer distance. You're gonna be able to do slightly more damage front loaded into it. Whenever you hit with firebolt, you're doing slightly more damage. They're both this is a save versus so create bonfire is a save, firebolt's an attack roll. There are some numerical differences there about what creatures are most and least likely to be affected by them. It doesn't really matter because it's a, still a deck save, so it's still affecting their dexterity scores. So create bonfire is better against heavily armored creatures um, with low dexterity, whereas firebolt is better against creatures that have lower dexterity that aren't heavily armored. Um, it doesn't matter tremendously if we're looking in that uh, field of play. It's like a difference of 5%, 5 to 10% hits sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't matter at all. Uh, I wouldn't put that much weight on it. Um, the other really big upside is Great Bonfire can work with Firebolt. So you yeah. don't necessarily need them to be independent of each other. If you want to be the arsonist, if you want to do the fire damage, and you don't want to, and you're in the kind of game where you are expected to save your spell slots as you're going throughout a course of an adventure, where you're expecting to play six, seven, eight encounters before you get a long rest, being able to have a play pattern of I create bonfire first. And then if the thing stays there, I just start wailing on it with firebolts. That is a reasonable, somewhat varied course of play than just I cast firebolt ad, ad nauseum. And it increases your damage. It has some situational utility. Lots of good things that make Crate Bonfire um, a great spell to exist and a very fun spell to play with. Now, you keep you keep saying if the thing stays there. And you even reasoned it once, like, oh, it's just this much damage. But, I mean, he's on fire. Who's not moving from that? So... 
I think a lot of encounters are going to actually find it like difficult to get away sometimes. So positioning is a big thing in Dungeons and Dragons, specifically in the really low tiers of play. Whenever you're looking at how do you step back or sidestep within a specific environment, attacks opportunity are mm. more damage than a potential sequential great bonfire could be. Okay. Being against walls, being surrounded or like flanked on two sides, I wouldn't recommend playing with flanking rules, by the way, but for the terminology, like having someone uh, on the right of a creature and in front of the creature, if they're against a wall, create bonfire, the options are take an attack opportunity by backing up or take the create bonfire damage save again, which is not given, you know, it might pass, yeah, they yeah. might fail it, a whole series of things. Additionally, if you're against bigger creatures, it isn't. Like, a large creature having one foot in a bonfire, like a hill giant, may not see it as, like, you know, this big roaring torrent of flame, but just, like, a little smoldering annoyance on its foot that it just doesn't care to move from because it would be in a different position. It wouldn't be able to reach everyone it wants to reach. There are strategic reasons why you'd want to have a creature stay engaged, even if it's taking persistent damage. At minimum, it's offering a somewhat interesting decision for the DM and their monsters that care then about positioning and that you can kind of interact with with great bonfire where no other cantrip in the game really can interact with it in that same way and that's why again i think that it is a novel entity i think you're right that a lot of times if it's against one creature a five foot step to the left or right is often gonna be like yeah i'm out of the bonfire it's free i'm against one melee creature who gives a shit um it's still doing a da damage it's still almost as good as firebolt but mm-hmm. it then has the myriad of the upsides that i've talked about where you in other circumstances you will find better niche uses for it all right so would you recommend having both on your on your sheet? Um, if you only if you're playing a sorcerer, probably not because you have a lot less cantrips. I would normally recommend if you're like if you're if you have three or less cantrips, you probably only want one damaging cantrip, and you probably want two other cantrips that offer different kinds of utility. Because world exploration tends to be where the bulk of play actually happens, and encounters mm-hmm. tend to be then you're only going to be using two or three like the cantrip two or three times in most tables. Um, if you are at a playing a wizard or someone that's got access to more cantrips early, or if you're going to know you're going into a table that's going to be very combat focused, I would say as long as you can get like a mage hand, as long as you can get another utility cantrip down the road, like minor illusion or something that you have access to to help with the exploration pillar of play. If you expect to be casting a lot of cantrips, Cray Bonfire and Firebolt is a way to have more dynamic and engaging fights and will improve your damage numbers almost, almost guaranteed. This, those two together work well as a pair if you only ever if you're going to pick one pick create bonfire i would almost always universally recommend because create bonfire adds more interesting situations lets you use your actions to do other things if you want to like if you are planning on casting a lot of upper level spells starting with a create bonfire and then firing off guiding bolts then firing off um you know any other number of first level or higher spells that still works you're just getting the free damage conceivably there whereas firebolt can only and ever will only be 1d10 damage well with scaling and all that fun stuff um it is if you if you want to have more interesting and dynamic decisions to make, create bonfire is way more interesting than firebolt and probably slightly more powerful, even though its damage dice is smaller. All right, now you you mentioned scaling with firebolt. Create bonfire also scales. Yes. Uh I I don't know. This doesn't seem like it scales high enough for me to care. Am I, I mean, missing it, something there? It scales for free. You're never spending spells yeah. on it, right? So once you hit fifth level, it's doing two d eight damage. The eleventh level, three d eight damage. The real, the realistic outcome of cantrips at the upper tiers is you're you have better things to cast than this. Yeah, you have better yeah. ways to spend your actions, um, because no one. My, I don't say no one. Very few people are playing the a game that is so many encounters that you will be forced to use many cantrips before your next long rest, as opposed to just casting first level or higher spells. And like, if you're at eleventh level. This is better than casting Chromatic Orb because Chromatic Orb costs you a spell slot and this doesn't, mm. but they do the same damage. So at 11th level, this replaces your first level of damage spells. Sure. But we're, we're now trying to talk to the tier of play that very few people are even touching. Most players play the game between first and ninth level, somewhere in that range, around the third and fifth level slots typically. Um, so if we're looking towards the upper tier damage anyway, it's not likely it's going to matter. It's nice that it's there, but again, not hugely impactful. I will say if you're if you do really like using create bonfire, it is nice that if you can consistently set up builds where like you throw the two d eight damage in a spot and then start firing off higher level spells, that's just free damage for the rest of the time. As long as you sure. don't care about concentration or anything else, that's two d eight damage that's just there until you lose concentration on it, and it doesn't cost you a whole lot because concentration you just bring right back up with the next time you cast it again as a cantrip. It doesn't cost you any spell slots. It's good for that. All right. Well, you got a score for this one. I think this is a, a solid four. I think this. 
I would have rated almost every other damage, damage cantrip in the game that only does damage as like a three. Um, most of the utility ones are in the same boat where it's like, yeah, sure, it's fine. It's a damaging cantrip. Um, Cray Bonfire is just enough little extra stuff. You can get a, just enough extra little juice out of it that I think it is by and large one of, if not the best damaging option as a cantrip you get. And that makes it a four because you your DM is going to have to be like, oh, crap. I have to think about where these things are moving now. I have to think about like, oh, I gave them, I, I have everything coming through a five foot wide tunnel. Everything's taking a D8 fire damage potentially by running through this. And that's just off a of cantrip. Um, and as far as cantrips reshaping the game, that's about as much as you can ask for. Yeah. I'm thinking now about if you have know, a five foot wide corridor, that could really, yeah, do something. Yeah. yeah. Control your environment. I was going to give this a middle of the road three, but you've, you've convinced me. I'll, I'll go with, I will agree with your four. Cool. All right. That was Create Bonfire. Thank you, Sam, for your wisdom and insight. And thank you, everyone else, for watching and joining and listening and all that. We will see you next time. Bye bye. Thank you for watching. If you found this helpful, informative, or entertaining, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button below. You needn't smash it, a gentle tap will suffice. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel. And make sure you check out the links in the description where you'll find my Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels, Sam's full review of the spell, and other fun things.